If you own one of these, chances are you just ripped it out of the box, plugged some cables in, placed it wherever you could and started blasting music. But that just ain't right, is it? So what, we're just throwing around super expensive studio gear now, are we? Hmm. This is what it's come to. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to Noise. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to set up your speakers correctly. And as you see, I don't really care much for mine. But before we crack on, just remember to hit that like and subscribe button, show your support, show your love, and I'll be bringing you videos twice every week. I see so many pictures of studios with speakers on their side when they're just not meant to be. I know it may look cool, but the waveguide from the tweeter is not actually designed to transmit sound in both directions. You might want to have a look in your manual again to see whether your speakers can be put on their sides because I guarantee you a lot of them can't. It's really crucial that the tweeter, which is the smaller driver on the speaker, is at ear height. Because it's where you're getting most of your frequencies from, and I realize that's not the most technical way of putting it, you want to make sure that that's sitting at a nice level. So for example, these two little speakers right here are way too high. But now they're perfect and line up with the other tweeters on my bigger speakers either side of them. If you're having trouble, just get some floor stands. They're really cheap. I think these are around $40. Or if you want some desk stands, something like this, I think these are made by ISO Acoustic. They're great. They're a little expensive. You could also jump into a local skip and try and find some bricks. I've seen a lot of people do that and it seems to work. Another reason people put speakers on foam or stands or these little hockey puck things that I have under my bigger speakers is because it decouples the speaker from the surface that it's on. Now what that means is it stops the bass transmitting through the surface, the desk or the bookshelf or whatever it's on and has a better chance of getting to you first rather than emitting through that solid material. Essentially, what you're trying to do here is hover the speaker and if we could have them on chains hanging from the ceiling, that would be great. But these are good alternatives for now. Bigger is not better, and I know some of you will want to blow your friends' faces off with your brand new bass cannons, but if you buy speakers that are too big for your room, you're asking for trouble. You're better off spending more money on smaller speakers that are more accurate. You also want to consider how big your room is. If you have a really small room and you put really big speakers in it, you're going to be dealing with waves of a much larger amplitude, which is going to make it harder to produce, mix, and master whilst listening accurately. Try not to have the speakers too far apart or too close together. I think you want to find the ultimate position for you at the end of the day. A lot of people talk about an equilateral triangle, so if the two bottom corners here and here are where the speakers should sit and then this is your listening position, I think it works, but also it depends on your room and it depends on your speakers and where the speakers are set up in your room. So. Try out the equilateral triangle, start there, and then you might find you want to move them further away or closer together until you get your ultimate listening position. There's no one perfect equation for the most accurate listening environment. Or, or is there? Acousticians, grill me. Speakers also need space. And what I mean by that is space from the back and side wall. Ideally, you want a minimum of 30 centimeters. I understand that if you're setting up a home studio or it's in your bedroom, this might not always be possible, but just do your best. I know and I understand that some of you are on a budget and you don't want to be spending money on an audio interface and cables, especially when you just spent a lot of your budget on your speakers. But if you are plugging directly into your laptop via your headphone jack, it's not sacrilegious, but you might find that you get some buzzing and some hissing and some crackling. So if you can, stretch your budget and get yourself a decent audio interface and some cables. I'll leave a link above to a video that I did on cables and one that I did on audio interfaces that you might find useful. Almost had you there, didn't I? We get really excited about getting new speakers. We just want to play music through them. But something we often miss in the manual is that they need time to be burned in. Now, what I mean by that is you want to play music through them fairly loud and music that has some bass in it for around 
50 to 100 hours. Now it depends on the manufacturer, so check the manual. The burn-in time is crucial to getting those drivers and cones moving because when they come out the factory, they're a little stiff. You may or may not notice, but your speakers actually start to sound better over time. And at around the 100 mark is when they're fully primed for listening to music. To be honest, I'm not gonna give you a rundown on primary reflections, standing, waves, and phase cancellation because I wanna make a video on acoustic treatment without boring you to death. I do think acoustic treatment is really important, but I've got three words for you. Rug, mattress, foam tiles. Because they all have different thicknesses and different materials, you'll find that they absorb different frequency ranges pretty well. A lot of my first studios were mattresses, rugs, and foam tiles. I would recommend putting the mattress behind the speakers, the rug under the desk or on the floor behind your desk, and foam tiles dotted around. Oh, and it's not soundproofing, it's sound treatment. Sound treatment is dealing with reflections. It's not gonna stop it from traveling through the wall and waking up your parents or your poor neighbors. Are you allowed to say bit on YouTube? Is, is even a bad word? Follow all the steps that I just showed you and then sit down and have some listening time. It's really important that you get to understand how your speakers sound in your room. Kick back, relax and enjoy your favorite records whilst your ears tune in and do the hard work for you. That's it everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. Remember that there is a drum mixing submission. If you didn't see the previous video, which I will link above, I'm gonna be mixing your drums. So I'm going to take an eight bar loop of individual stems of your drums that you've made and I'm gonna mix them on this YouTube channel. So be sure to send those. I'll leave a link in the description below. If you love what you saw today, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see you very shortly. Stay tuned for the bloopers. If you don't want to, <laughs> can you do? Can you throw it up more? Ah. Yeah, yeah. If you own one of these, hold on, I've got the line now. Oh. Oh, my oh. <sighs> the things I do for you guys.